A group of supervillains are gathered around and plotting to take their revenge on Superman. They speak their names as Toy Man, Livewire, Weather Wizard, Calabac, and Metalo as they swear on a pact. They arrange an ambush for the Man of Steel by attacking Metropolis. Toyman takes the lead by attacking with his giant toy robot and making havoc in the streets. Unexpectedly, Green Lantern shows up along with Martian Manhunter. Soon, Weather Wizard have to deal with Flash and the Wonder Woman, and the Wizard attacks them with his thunderstorms. Flash gets an idea, and with the help of Diana, he sends Metallo hurling down the way. Kalabak attacks Wonder Woman, and Weather Wizard does not hesitate to create a giant tornado which disrupts everything in the city. Green Lantern tries his best to save the citizens who are caught in the storm. Diana gets punched down by Kalibak, and Flash is unable to stop Weather Wizard. It takes only one Batarang from the Dark Knight to stop the Wizard, as he arrives right on time. Kalibak calls on Batman, but seems like he was only waiting for the arrival of Superman. The Man of Steel knocks out Kalibak on the spot, but this is the moment the villains have been waiting for. Toy Man reveals his secret weapon once again as the giant toy robot equipped with a disintegrator beam. Toy Man fires several times and sections of the city disappear without trace. Superman evades the beams, but Toy Man takes aim at Batman and Wonder Woman. Superman throws himself in front of them and takes the blast, disappearing without trace. Shocked, the League and the Earth Superman believe that the blast bye -bye. killed Superman. In anger, Wonder Woman destroys Toy Man's robot and threatens to kill him, but Flash talks her out. We don't do that to our enemies. Speak for yourself. Memory. I'm trying to speak for Superman. The world is mourning the death of the greatest superhero ever lived. Lantern leaves for the ceremony. Diana wears the royal dress to honor the Man of Steel as Shira is still crying in the desert at the thought of losing Superman. The only person who refuses to believe that Superman is dead is Batman. He analyzes the evidence from the battle, insisting that objects can't disappear without a trace. He snubs the invitations of Alfred and the other leaguers to attend Superman's funeral in Metropolis. When will they start actually listening to Batman? At Superman's funeral, the attendants include the Justice League without Batman, the staff of the Daily Planet, Jonathan and Martha Kent, several Earth leaders, and superheroes. However, everyone gasps as Lex Luthor arrives. Lois Lane is furious that Lex has appeared, as she believes he came to gloat over Superman's death, but she soon breaks into tears until Lex comforts her, and genuinely admits that he will also miss Superman greatly. John John As an ongoing tribute to Cal L. The of Krypton, the immigrant from the stars who taught us all bring the how to, to be his memorial. Wonder Woman spots Batman watching the procession from the shadows. Holding a wake for Superman in the Watchtower, the League swaps stories about him. Then John tentatively proposes adding a new member. Diana calls on Batman, but he cuts the call saying he is busy as always. Suddenly, Lobo crashes through the window, announcing that he's there to take Superman's Superman place. Kicked the bucket. Diana, That's why I'm here. Flash, Lantern all steps up, protesting his arrival, as they want nothing to do with a bounty hunter. When the League orders him out, and Diana tries to beat him up, he decides to audition by tearing the Watchtower apart and attacking them. Investigating another of his theories, Batman follows a trail to Superman's memorial. Finding nothing, he wonders if he's wrong and Superman really is dead. Alone, he takes this opportunity to tell Clark that despite their differences, he has always respected him, what he taught him, and that he will miss him. But his tribute is interrupted by a nearby explosion, so Batman has to take off. In the streets, dozens of supervillains are running amok in Metropolis, celebrating Superman's death in their own fashion. Calabac threatens to destroy the whole city, and just then, Batman arrives in his jet and shoots missile at Calabac. Livewire manages to strike the jet down with her electricity, but Batman is able to jump off right in time. He takes down a couple more thieving villains, but Livewire again strikes the Dark Knight, knocking him out cold this time. Back in the Watchtower, the League is trying to hold down the rampaging Lobo. Flash manages to get on his motorcycle and control the machine while the other Leaguers get hold of Lobo, especially Hawkgirl. Just then, the Martian tells them about the supervillains running havoc in Metropolis. The League reluctantly brings Lobo along as they go to fight, mainly because they don't trust him alone in the Watchtower. However, given his unique fighting ability, they allow him to join the battle only as long as he follows their direct orders. The League attacks with difficulty on subduing the rogue villains. 
At first, it's hard for them to take down the villains, but the knocked-out Batman also joins to strengthen the force. They contain the captured villains. Lobo makes himself useful in his own fashion, beating Kalibok into submission with a few cars, forcing him to say uncle, and causing plenty of destruction in the process. To the already grieving League, Lobo boasts how with him on the team, Superman is no longer needed. The Leaguers bow their heads, contemplating life without the Man of Steel. Elsewhere, on a barren landscape, under a red sun and some rubble, lies the Man of Steel, the Superman. Superman regains consciousness and sees the barren landscape, as well as a few sections of Metropolis that were hit by Toyman's disintegrator beam. Wherever he is, the beam transported him there, instead of destroying him. He sees that the sun is red, meaning his powers will wane. Also, his communicator does not have any audio. Superman goes into rogue survivor mode as he salvages what food and supplies he can from the cars in the street fragments. He then siphons gas into an old Cadillac and drives off. It turns out to be a superb survivor story as Superman is unable to find anything else. He makes camp that night, at the foothills of a desert mountain. He wakes up from sleep hearing the menacing growls of a pack of wolf-like creatures. He manages to drive them away with fire. To prepare for any more dangers that lie ahead, he uses some flares to fashion an iron bar into a crude but effective sword. He jumps in the car and gets going as the rain falls down on the deserted land. Before too long, his car is out of gas and he is forced to walk. Soon, he finds himself surrounded by the wolf creatures once again, as he has to trust his sword and hammer to deal with the predators. Superman fights fearlessly and is able to he kills their leader and subjugates the rest of the pack, harnessing them as sled dogs for a new improvised vehicle and wearing the leader's pelt. Vintage thug life move by the Superman. After a few more days, he reaches the ruins of a city and finds the source of the signal, down below on the plains. Superman let go of his newfound wolves and they reluctantly leave their new leader. He comes across a thickly grown jungle area, which has many a number of wild creatures and soon he reaches the Justice League Watchtower, which has crashed to the ground and is now in ruins. Entering, he tries to access its computer. It tells him that the rest of the League's whereabouts are unknown, then shuts down due to low power. Superman bangs his fists down in frustration and just then, a mysterious figure approaches him from a dark corner, Vandal Savage, the Immortal One. Savage seems uncharacteristically glad to see Superman, and he soon explains why, as the planet they are on is Earth, 30,000 years in the future and the entire human race, except for the immortal Savage, is dead meaning that the whole Earth belongs to him now. Savage explains that only a few months after Superman disappeared, he stole a piece of white dwarf star matter from Dr. Ray Palmer and used it to create a gravity-based superweapon. Without Superman, Savage killed the rest of the Justice League and proclaimed himself ruler of the Earth. However, the weapon disrupted the balance of the solar system, killing the rest of the human race. Upon hearing this, Superman attacks Savage in rage, and Savage does not resist. Superman almost crushes Savage's head with a rock, but refrains due to the awareness that Savage cannot die. Savage acknowledges he deserves such treatment and more. After millennia of loneliness and isolation, he's come to realize that his obsession with conquest was meaningless. With plenty of time on his hands, Savage has built himself a luxurious multi-story mansion in the ruins of Metropolis, with a large garden and plenty of technological amenities. He passes his time reading self-help books, working on various inventions, or on hobbies such as restoring other parts of the city. He treats Superman to a home-cooked meal and invites him to stay. Wandering around the mansion one night, Superman finds a time machine. He wakes Savage and asks why he did not finish it. Savage explains there would be no point, as the machine would not allow him to travel back to any time where he was already alive. Superman points out that he can, since he's dead, having been removed from the time period entirely and can stop Savage's destruction of the Earth. He and Savage work together to complete the machine, but find that they can't keep the portal open without a much larger power source. Savage knows of only one a zero-point energy generator that he built but was stolen some years ago by a colony of giant cockroaches. Since Savage stated that building another one would take 50 years, 
He and Superman arm themselves and sneak into the colony to get it back. They are ambushed by a number of cockroaches on the way in, and the creatures are just too big and strong to deal with. In battle with the roaches, Superman apparently falls to his death into the pit containing the generator. But instead, the device, which as Savage has explained, is like a miniature sun, instantly restores his powers and he is able to get himself and Savage away safely. Savage opens the portal, giving Superman the information he needs to thwart his younger self's plan. Before going, the two men shake hands and Superman departs. Back in the present, after Lobo takes down Kalibak, Deadshot takes aim at Batman with a missile. Superman's hand appears and catches it. In wonder, the League crowds around him, except for Batman for obvious reasons. Flash is crying, seeing the Man of Steel and Diana is impressed with his thick beard. Superman tells Lobo he's fired, and the bounty hunter angrily jets away on his bike. Superman says he'll explain what happened to him, but first, they have a job to do. The League flies into action, with Superman leading the way. In the future, Savage is quietly sitting alone among the ruins of Metropolis. He sees a ghostly figure of a child run by, then more people. Slowly the ruins disappear and a living city replaces it, filled with people. Savage sees his own body becoming translucent and gratefully says, Thank you, my friend, before fading into the new timeline. All is well, but the Superman and Lobo story has not even begun. At a desert station space laboratory, the scientists are doing tests for improvement on Superman's space rocket. Superman personally rides the rocket and proves that it's greater than any other ship on Earth. He finally comes to a stop and congratulates Professor Hamilton for his work on converting the rocket for manned space travel. Hamilton thanks Superman for the opportunity and wonders about other civilizations even more advanced and civilized than Earth's. Elsewhere, on some other planet, Lobo causes a ruckus in an alien bar and captures Squeak, a rat-like alien that apparently stole money from the alien emperor Spooge. Before Lobo can take his bounty, Squeak's older brother Gnaw shows up and insists that he will get the bounty on Squeak. The usual bar fight breaks out and it's no different from Earth fights. Somehow at the end, Lobo manages to beat Gnaw and his gang and takes off after lighting the explosive fluid, making the whole place explode after him. As he flies through space, another spaceship uses its power to transport Lobo and Squeak onto their ship by force. Lobo is furious, but the calm and collective creature introduces itself as the Preserver and explains itself as a being who collects and preserves the last member of species across the universe. He wants Superman the last Kryptonian, for his zoo, and he believes only Lobo can capture him. Lobo mocks him and refuses the proposal, but only until he sees the reward of a casket full of jewels, and he readily agrees to the new project of capturing Superman. Lobo goes to Earth and enters the Metropolis Police Department. Asking the on-duty officer if they have seen Superman, the officer says that they rarely do, and only if in trouble, Lobo delightfully takes it as the opportunity to make some. At the Daily Planet, Lois Lane is frustrated with Clark Kent being able to pull off all the hot leads, and when they receive the news of the massacre being done by Lobo, Clark beats her to it once again. Having sieged the police station, utterly destroying it, and all before his boredom gets to creating a nuclear bomb to detonate, Superman shows up to stop him, and Lobo attacks him. Superman fights back, but Lobo proves to be just as strong as his adversary. The police attack with gas, and Lobo shows that he has a weakness for it. He soon recovers quickly, however, and attacks again. The two continue to do battle, and Lobo calls in his bike. This doesn't provide too much trouble until Lobo fires a missile. While it misses Superman, it heads straight for a train. Superman intercepts the missile and takes the blow, making Lobo get the upper hand. Lois Lane shows up with a pipe, trying to defend Superman from this alien beast, but Lobo takes a dirty liking to her. Lobo approaches her menacingly, and just then, a thumping punch comes from the Man of Steel, sending him hurling down onto the docks. The back-and-forth fight causes considerable damage to the LexCorp building as well. Now Superman has the upper hand, but Lobo manages to escape into space, vowing to return. Determined to prevent Lobo from coming back, Superman uses his rocket to follow Lobo into space. Lobo sneaks up on his jet, 
while Superman is on the lookout and once again, the two engage in a space fight. After a brief fight involving his ship and Lobo's bike, Superman leaves his ship in his spacesuit to fight Lobo hand to hand. When Superman seems to be winning the fight, the Preserver is informed that Superman is within range and captures him. Superman wakes up in what he believes to be Krypton but learns he is in a small cage made to look like Krypton. Superman attempts to break out but finds that his powers are cancelled out by a red light that gives the same radiation as the red sun of Krypton. Lobo mocks Superman but soon finds himself captured as well, since he is the last Zarnian, which the Preserver intends to keep as well. After his humiliating defeat at the hands of Lobo, Gnaw tells Emperor Spooge that Lobo took a bribe to release Squeak. Emperor Spooge angrily orders Lobo to return either dead or alive, and Gnaw is contracted with it. The Preserver returns Superman's outfit but refuses to release him. Lobo awakens in his cell and finds that there are two alien women with him, but when he tries to escape, they prove to be robots and strike him with knockout gas. Superman is determined to escape and notices a large dinosaur-like creature peacefully eating across from his cell. Using a large crystal, Superman provokes the creature into attacking, thereby getting it to shatter the glass, holding him in. Outside of his cell, Superman's strength begins to return, and he sets out to leave. Lobo asks to be freed as well, but Superman refuses, deciding he deserves to stay locked up. Enraged, Lobo vows to escape and take his revenge not only on Superman, but all of Earth. Superman gets Lobo to promise that he'll leave Earth alone and free him. Lobo is freed, and he immediately destroys the two robot maids who were controlling him. Shortly after Lobo's escape, under the command of the Preserver, security droids approach and insist the two returns to their enclosures. When Lobo refuses, the droids attack with stun weapons. They take to hiding quickly as Superman is put forward to distract the droids while Lobo attacks them from the behind. The droids are no match for the duo and are quickly destroyed. The two continue on to a jungle area but are dropped into a pit with a huge snake-like creature who emerges from the ground beneath them. The snake tries to eat up Superman and Lobo comes to his aid by pulling off the skin of the snake and chasing it away. Seeing the power of his captives, the Preserver decides that he may have to capture them himself. Just then, Gnaw halts his ship and demands Lobo be turned over to him. The Preserver invites him to come upon his ship and retrieve Lobo himself. Inside the jungle, attended by two robotic maids, Squeak is having the time of his life, unfortunately cut short by Lobo once again. Lobo retrieves Squeak, but he and Superman are attacked by Gnaw and his gang. The two are no match for their weapons as they take into hiding behind a rock. All seems lost until Superman gets a plan after scanning the surroundings. He opens a nearby doorway and tricks Gnaw into throwing him into the enclosure, which contains a dodo from Earth. Superman basks in the light of a simulated yellow sun and regains his powers. Lobo, on the other hand, nearly makes it to his bike but finds the Preserver there waiting for him. The Preserver gives Lobo one last chance to go back to his enclosure, but Lobo refuses. In response, the Preserver transforms into a red, hulking clawed giant and attacks. Lobo is nearly killed, but Superman intervenes. However, in his new form, the Preserver is a formidable opponent. Lobo decides to do his good deed for the century and opens the ship's door, causing the Preserver to be sucked out into the vacuum of space. Finally, back with Emperor Spooge, Lobo relaxes and finishes his story, saying why he was so late in delivering his bounty. Emperor Spooge claims that he knew Lobo would never let him down and reveals his displeasure with Gnaw and his gang. However, he is curious about the fate of Superman and the animals. Lobo explains that Superman took the creatures to his Fortress of Solitude so that they might still be preserved. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.